Kia ora Year 12 and 13. This is a question from 2005. Um, we have to figure out a trig identity and then use it to solve a cubic. So this question um, was worth half of question 5. So back then in 2005, the paper structure was a bit different. Uh, but now it will probably be worth, I guess, um, 4 out of an 8 mark question. If you haven't done level 3 yet, this question is going to be quite hard. Um, especially if you haven't done trig. But if you have done level 3 trig, it's not too bad, especially to start off with. Um, one of the reasons I really like it is that it links up some trig identities with um, some nice algebra ideas, um, especially the fundamental theorem of algebra, and it's got three parts to it. So the ideas we're going to use in here, um, colour-coded in Christmas colours, because it's nearly Christmas Eve, uh, we're going to use the compound and double angle formulae, then we're going to think about what the roots of an equation can tell us and how many roots there are for an equation, right? And the guts of that is that if we've got a cubic, by the fundamental theorem of algebra, we're going to have three roots for an equation. We're also going to use um, general solutions to find um, the solutions to a trig equation, and we're going to use special triangles. So I really like this problem because it's quite accessible using level three stuff, um, the first time you go through it, it might feel a little bit tricky, but if you go th through it a couple of times, you'll get a lot of great revision out of it. So um, just having a look at it before we get into it, there are, as I said, three bits. The first bit is this expansion bit. So expand this and then prove this. Then we're going to make a substitution. We're going to put x equals two-thirds of cos theta, and we're going to chuck that into this equation and see what we get. And the big clue word here is hence. So somehow we're going to use this identity with this equation. And then, hence again, without using your calculator, find the exact value of this product. So if you just um, looked at this bit here without these bits, you might look at this and think pi on 9, 3 pi on 9, 5 pi on 9, 7 pi on 9. It looks like some kind of series, a sequence or progression but it's not going to be that hard. Okay, so now let's um, get into the first bit, which is to do the expansion of cos 2a plus b. So cos of 2a plus b, we can expand using the compound angle formula. So it's going to be cos 2a cos b minus sine 2a sine b. And that's one that you will get on the formula sheet, but you should know it. Okay, so um, what am I going to do now? Well, I'm going to do something with my double angle cosine. I know that I want to end up with all cosines in my answer. So the version I'm going to choose is 2 cos squared a minus 1 times cos b minus. Now, the, there's only one thing I can do with that. It's going to be 2 sine a cos a sine b. I could keep going with that and simplify, but this is probably a good time to look at where I want to go. I want to show something about cos of 3 theta. Um, in particular, I want one quarter of cos of 3 theta. But we're going to forget about that one quarter until the end. So if I want cos of 3 theta here, I'm going to link that up here. And I'm going to say, let A and B both be equal to theta. So that gives me that cos of 2a plus b is equal to cos of 3 theta. And I can now substitute in theta everywhere. Just moving my screen up a wee bit. So you should just um, maybe forward the video, do this bit yourself, and check that you haven't made any silly little mistakes. We're going to expand that out now and collect up terms. So what have we got? Well, we've got 2 cos cubed theta minus cos theta minus 2 sine squared theta cos theta. But remember, I don't want to have any sines in my answer. I want all cosines. So I'm going to take the sine squared and replace it with 1 minus cos squared. So we'll take the 2 cos theta out the front and replace the sine squared theta, and we're just about there. So really, this has been very level 3-ish so far. 
Right? There's not that much really tricky thinking in there. But we're now going to um, link up some of the algebra ideas as well. So simplifying that, I get 4 cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta. Um, and that's what cos 3 theta is equal to. So that means that 1 quarter of cos 3 theta is equal to cos cubed theta minus 3 quarters cos theta. So that's your first couple of marks in that question. Remember scholarship calculus is all about part marks. So we've got down to there, and we're going to put a big star next to that thing because we're going to use it. Okay, so that was the, the easy bit. Now the next bit needs a little bit of thinking about. Um, let's just look back to the question, which I've managed to cross out. So we've done the first bit. So now we're up to here. By putting x equal to 2 thirds cos theta, find the exact roots of this equation in terms of pi. So what we're going to do is substitute in here, solve that equation, and then at the end we're going to work backwards to figure out what x is. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We've got 27x cubed minus 9x equals 1. Um, we know that it's a cubic, so by the fundamental theorem of algebra, it has three roots. So let's do the substitution now and work that through. So it's 27 times 2 thirds of cos theta cubed minus 9 times that equals 1. Right, so 27 times 8 over 27 cos cubed theta minus 6 cos theta equals 1. Simplifying out the 27 gives me this. So we're sitting here looking at this and going, oh, I've still got a cubic. But remember that it said hence. So we've got to use what we had up above. So it's time to go back and look at what did we get to. Well, we had this thing here, which said that one quarter of cos 3 theta is equal to this. So we must be able to take, oops, where did it go? Yeah. We must be able to take this bit here and rewrite my left-hand side so that I've got a 3 theta. And that's pretty easy to do because this bit in here is um, equal to 1 quarter cos 3 theta. So I've got 8 times 1 quarter cos 3 theta is equal to 1. So we're getting down to a really straightforward little trig equation. 2 cos 3 theta is equal to 1, giving me cos of 3 theta is equal to 1 half. Now we know that we're solving this and we're looking for three solutions. Um, I'm going to do a general trig solution on this and say, well, when is cos of 3 theta equal to a half? Let's draw our cosine function. Very bad cosine function. But we know that um, pi on 3 or 60 degrees is my principal solution here. Right, but we can write the general solution like this. So 3 theta is equal to 2 n pi plus or minus the angle whose cosine is 1 half. So if you're watching this and you haven't done level 3 trig yet, um, go and have a look at some of the videos I've done on general solutions. Pretty sure there's one there. Don't have to do a general solution here, but I found it easiest. So we're now going to pick off um, the values that we're going to get to give me three roots. So 2 n pi on 3 plus or minus 1 third times pi on 3. And that's because this is coming from that special triangle. So theta is equal to 2 n pi on 3 plus or minus pi on 9. So now let's chuck in some values. When n equals 0, theta is equal to, we'll just do pi on 9. 
And when n is 1, what do we get? When n is 1, theta is equal to 6 pi on 9, so that's 2 pi on 3, 6 pi on 9 plus pi on 9. Or theta is equal to 6 pi on 9 minus pi on 9. So that gives me 7 pi on 9, and that one gives me 5 pi on 9. Now I could also have done um, negative pi on 9 here, but you'll see that it's going to be um, superfluous. Right, so I've got... Right, so we've now got these three values of theta. Right, so theta is equal to um, pi on 9, 5 pi on 9, and 7 pi on 9. But our goal was to solve the equation. So if we go right back to the question, the question was in here. Remember, we've made that substitution, but our point is to find the roots of this equation in terms of pi. So what we need to do now is to say, well, hang on, what was x? x was 2 thirds cos theta. So my three values of x are going to be x is equal to 2 thirds cos pi on 9, 2 thirds cos of 5 pi on 9, and 2 thirds cos of 7 pi on 9. So these are the roots for this equation. 27x cubed minus 9x equals 1. Now let's rewrite that. We can put it as 27x cubed minus 9x minus 1 equals 0. And just thinking about how we often work with roots. Suppose that I had um, a really easy quadratic x plus 4 times x minus 7 equals 0. The roots of that quadratic of course will be negative 4 and 7. So if I go backwards and I tell you what the roots are, we can put them into factorised form. Okay, so I've got this cubic here and I found the roots, but we can think about that cubic like this, we've got x cubed minus, dividing everything through by 27, this. Okay, so that's my cubic. And I know my roots are x equals 2 thirds cos of pi on 9, 2 thirds cos of 5 pi on 9, and 2 thirds cos of 7 pi on 9. So that means that I can rewrite this in factorised form like this. So it'll be x minus the first one, x minus the second one, and x minus the third one. Now you're probably going, why on earth did she want to do that? Well, it's because of the last part of the question, because we are now asked to do this without using a calculator and using the right bit of the stylus we have to write down the exact value of this product and somehow we're going to get this out of the fact that we've found roots to this equation that have got this one this one and this one so if we look at what it means that they're roots of the equation we can match up the coefficients we know that um, going back to my simple quadratic up here, this times this is going to give me the last term in my expansion, and in this case it'll be negative 28. So what can I say here? Well, if I do the same thing, if I multiply this times this times this, that's got to give me negative 1 over 27 which is pretty cool, because now I can say negative 2 thirds, and I'm going to cube that, because it's coming in here, here, and here, times cos of pi on 9, cos of 5 pi on 9, cos of 7 pi on 9, is equal to negative 1 27th. So I'm going to go really fast here, because I'm hitting my 15 minute limit, but what I end up getting from that is negative 8 on 27, times all of that stuff is equal to negative 1 over 27. Okay, so there you go. That's the very last bit done without talking because my time is up. Um, that's it from me for now. Thanks for watching.